Hey everyone, Riddle here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you're a subscriber. I'm doing this video because I promised one of my subscribers I would as soon as I had enough growth on these potatoes. My subscriber wanted a more detailed video on how you take cuttings from potatoes to propagate them. Now you might ask yourself, why would I do cuttings of potatoes? Well, for me specifically, the, uh, this variety of potato was very expensive and experimental. Uh, a lot of people don't know, but I had read that uh, there was a disease going through the United States right now that was threatening the potato crop. And we're seeing a lot of these pronounced insect uh, insect infiltrations and diseases happening around the world right now combined with crazy weather which is really affecting and threatening food supplies so my whole goal with my property is food security and what i realized last year is one thing that i didn't have in my food arsenal were tubers so i started doing the research and i invested in something called a jerusalem artichoke got those planted and then I wanted a variety of potatoes because of course you can take potatoes from the grocery store and just when you take the skins off of them or if you cut them in pieces you can get those potatoes to grow very easily but what I was thinking is that you know during these potato famines and these problems when we have massive crop failures uh, I believe we had a huge corn disease go through the country back in the late 70s and it was uh, frightening and what they had to do they had to bring in a uh, species of wild corn from Mexico and genetically integrate that into the crops to basically save them because we do a lot of monoculture planning meaning one kind of a particular uh, vegetable or plant and that leaves us vulnerable to if there is ever a kind of famine or disease that comes through and destroys or 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 decides to in, uh, infestate in infestate infest that particular plant excuse my fumbling words today lyme disease so what i decided was for food security is that i should get a nice variety of potatoes and i got this incredible variety of fingerling potato which they said was the most delicious potato in the world and that's a french potato called a l'arate l-a-r-a-t-t-e they claimed it was the most delicious potato in the world and it has a hazelnut aftertaste so i thought this is probably a bunch of bs and it's going to taste just like a regular old starchy potato but i still bled my wallet and I got five tiny little tubers, tiny little tubers with shipping. There's like 25 bucks from Etsy. Ouch. And because they were so expensive and you got so few of them, that's what inspired me to want to propagate them myself to increase my, my inventory. So I also got some seeds potato seeds from an online source called cultivar and these these are uh this this man is so committed to this huge variety of uh, wild and the more ancient varieties of potatoes that come from south america and he he sells out often uh, from the tubers and so all i i had to choose from were seeds and I bought the potato seeds, which were literally seeds, not, not eyes or tubers. And I successfully propagated those. And so I have some really great varieties of South American and Colombian, Andean. And I'm getting more and more into the potato thing. Again, just for food security. And so that I'm hopefully not affected if, this, uh, if a potato disease were to make its way all the way to the West Coast. Okay, so back to the cutting thing. So these are, when my subscriber reached out to me and wanted a more detail, uh, a more detail um, description of why or how to take potato cuttings, 
I told them that it was winter and I didn't have any growth or not enough growth on my potatoes to uh, do a video for her. In general, potatoes are like a vine. They're in the nightshade family, which is just like a, a tomato. You can kind of tell when something is in the nightshade family because there's so many vegetables that we eat that are in the nightshade family. And you can kind of tell because they all have the same type of little star-shaped flower. And that's very indicative. If you look at the poison nightshade, the little vining weed that grows and makes little purple flowers and little red berries that the birds eat. And the, there's very similar characteristics in peppers, potatoes, tomatoes. So with potatoes, they naturally grow, they vine very quickly. They also want to flower, but unless you want seeds, you want to keep them from flowering. So as they're vining, of course, the leaves are producing energy for the tubers, but you really don't need this giant length of potato. It, it kind of just takes up a lot of room. It'll, you know, if you don't have them spaced out well enough, it's gonna provoke more disease. It's also gonna invite more insects. Um, you do need often to protect your potatoes, especially when they're young, from slugs and earwigs. Now, before I do a planting of seeds in my garden in the springtime, a week before I plant my seeds, I do a preemptive slug bait application. This way I'm knocking out a huge population of the slugs and snails before I get my little delicate seedlings in so they're not wiped out when I'm asleep because these are the kind of insects that you, you plant all these seeds or you plant tender young plants and then the next morning everything's gone and you're like you think you did something wrong but you didn't you just made a lovely salad bar for earwigs and slugs and snails so that preemptive strike is is worth it and if you can get in the habit of doing things like that, you're going to save yourself a lot of money and a lot of time. So these potato, these potato plants are going to grow viney, 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 long, long, long. When they reach about 12, 10 to 12 inches or longer, that's when you want to take your cuttings. The thing is when you're doing potatoes in pots, and for me, I have to do potatoes in pots because we have a huge gopher problem here, gophers and moles, and they're impossible to manage. Even with cages, sometimes they figure a way to bite through the cages or they climb over the top of the edge and come from the top and go down and munch everything out. It's, it's my, my biggest challenge here on this property and I've tried everything. So I, doing the potatoes in pots, they're much easier to water it's easier to control the amount of water because potatoes are tubers, which means they have this root system, this root, this tuber that holds water. They don't like to be overwatered and they need a soil that you're going to have to put a lot of organic material and sand in. So you have really good drainage. And so the, the soil is nice and soft and loamy so the potatoes can form very easily. But the drainage is essential with potatoes and not to overwater. If anything, you're going to underwater with your potatoes. I literally, that's the reason I have all this mulch and stuff on here. So when it rains, some of the rain can bounce off and not all of it collect into the pot. You're also going to make sure that the holes in the bottom of your pot or your containers are substantial. You have plenty of them and they're large enough. So if one or two get plugged, that you're not going to have water pooling up in the bottom of your potatoes because the easiest way to kill a potato is by drowning it or overwatering it and that's just a fact so you want a lot of sand in your soil a lot of organic material if you have big pots uh, it's i know they get heavy fast especially when you're working with sand so remember that because if you're filling your pots in a particular area of the yard and then you got to move them somewhere it's going to be like moving several 50 pound bags of sand and it's really easy to hurt yourself so remember that you may want to do it fill those pots at the location that you're going to be planting the potatoes in the pot instead of trying to move it later okay so we've got our plants we're protected them we've got the soil down pat 
and we're going to do our cutting now. Now you have choices depending like how great your soil is and how committed you are to babying things. Um, rooting powders, I think is always a good idea when you're taking cutting. You know, it just gives you that, that ounce of prevention and it, it kind of protects the, the fresh wound and you got a little bit of plant hormone to help things along. So it's worth the investment, you know, of a couple bucks to do this. So I have my pot here. I'm gonna loosen up the soil a little bit. And so we have our beautiful French fingerling potatoes here. And I'm gonna look at the plant and I'm going to see where the different leaves are coming out. And you can see where there's more leaves coming out, these joints, I'll call them joints. And I'm just gonna take it off, right? About, you want it to be six inches or longer. So, so we have this joint here joint right there and we can take off this leaf because this leaf's not going to make it now when you're doing a cutting there's a couple things that are important like if you put it right out back out in full sun if we put it right back out in full sun that's going to be a real stressor for it so you may want to protect it like put a little shade cloth over your cuttings until they get established and quite often your cuttings are going to wilt and the, the the more mature leaves may die so a lot of people say just take those leaves off right away so they're not taking energy from your your the the, the stem trying to propagate and create roots so i've got my cutting i've loosened my soil i'm going to press that down a minimum of two inches and just give it a nice squeeze around the bottom to make sure that that soil that moist soil is making good contact with your stem. Then you're gonna put a little water on that, again, to make sure you have no air holes and the cutting has the moisture and the soil contact it needs. You're gonna protect it from the sun for a couple days and then that's it. And you're gonna see, just be patient, that these cuttings will take. And this is the way you turn a $25 or five potatoes into 500 potatoes. Because you can continue to do this to your heart's content. You know, you can also take cuttings of, of tomatoes. Tomatoes, especially from the suckers, the little growth from the, that come out from the joints and the sides of the tomato plants. Um, I, I also recently saw a video that tomatoes and potatoes are so closely related that they you can graft a tomato plant onto a potato plant so you just the stems you connect the stems you graft them and then you have potatoes coming out of the roots and you'll have tomatoes coming out from the top which is pretty cool the only thing is every video I've seen that somebody's done this so far the tomato part didn't seem like it thrived like it made potatoes, but it was kind of puny. They were puny tomatoes. So that inspired me not to try that experiment for myself. Oh, for Christ's sake, <laughs> shut up. This is my very upset rooster. Uh, he got knocked out of his pecking order by another dominant rooster. And now he's decided that because he can't take control of the flock, that he's going to take control of everything else. And I think he's gonna wind up as dinner soon. Yeah, that's right. He is trouble. Okay, so that's it. It's as simple as that. That's how you take a potato cutting. And uh, as long as you've got large pots, you've got the proper soil, you should be able to go, go, go. Let me take you over to other areas that I have potatoes happening. So I also read that garlic doesn't like to be mixed up with a lot of other types of vegetables, but garlic actually grows great with potatoes. So the garlic also will help dis different diseases from forming with your, with your garlic, I mean, with your potatoes, just like garlic helps boost our immune system. I guess it helps boost the immune system of plants. So this is a big bed of garlic that also has potatoes in it. And uh, the potatoes haven't come up yet here. They're hard to see. But here we have both potatoes coming up 
and these are the French potatoes, and we have garlic coming up. Now this garlic was seed garlic, so tiny little bulbs. So they look like little tiny blades of grass. I don't know if you can see those or not. Yep. And then the reason these potatoes grew so, so funky and they're tall and elongated is because these were a bag of those French potatoes that I'd found on the East Coast that they were selling to eat. And you could buy a, a couple pounds of them for half the price that I spent on Etsy. So I bought them for about 10 bucks and it was about five bucks for shipping, but I got a couple pounds of them. And then I sliced them in pieces and I thought I should protect them. So I rolled them in a little rooting compound, right? as an experiment, but the problem is the rooting compound, the hormone in the rooting compound created this overgrowth effect or this overstimulant effect on the greens, which made them do this crazy growth that they're doing right now in the raised beds, which is fine because that will calm down and all of these along, all this elongated foliage on the French uh, fingerling potatoes, I can cut and turn into cuttings, of course. But this surprised me. I, I wasn't expecting this um, just by putting a little rooting compound where I had sliced the potatoes. And usually you don't have to do that when you slice your potatoes to propagate them. People say just let them sit out for a day like you do with uh, succulents a day or so and just let them harden. But I was doing this in winter time and I knew there was gonna be rain and I was worried that the potatoes were gonna rot. And I did, that's why I experimented with using the rooting compound when I sliced my potato pieces and planted them. So, you know, live and learn. This is, this is all part of thriving with an agricultural project. These are all the, the things that you try and sometimes are successful and you discover something new. And sometimes you get this, hmm, this hmm moment. <laughs> and that was definitely a hmm moment. So. Those, those, these particular beds over here have three things in them. They have the potatoes, they have the garlic. I have like 15 different types of garlic right now because think about all the cultures that use garlic and of course they're gonna have their own type of garlic. So I got kind of garlic obsessed and I have some, believe it or not, this is really cool, saffron. Saffron is that very expensive spice. It's one of the most expensive spices in the world. And they only bloom one time in the fall. It's a fall blooming crocus. And it's the little stamen from the inside. There's only like three to five pieces that you have to pluck out with a pair of tweezers. And that is what, that is where that spice comes from. And it, it turns out that they also grow really well with potatoes and garlic. So this really skinny, looks like chives. These are actually saffron. And so slowly as those propagate and get larger, I'll be able to spread those. Because of course, saffron's threatened like many, many other things around the world right now that we took for granted. Olives, olive oil, is going to be so expensive, chocolate. It's just, things are happening. And you know, whatever illusion you wanna live in, I don't wanna go hungry. This is the other potato project I have going on. So here's a crazy thing. Remember I told you about how horrible the gophers are here? And it's because of the gophers that I have to plant in pots and I can't put my potatoes in the ground even when I make a cage. They'll go over the cage. They're just like, they're horrible, the gophers here. And I try everything to kill them. I had these, uh, these grow bags are very affordable, the felt grow bags. And I was really surprised because they have lasted for years. Amazing. Um, hopefully they still make them as good as they did five years ago. And so these work excellent for potatoes because the potatoes liking a, more, a little more dry environment, but I had that grow bag sitting on the ground, meaning on the soil, and all of a sudden all the potatoes disappeared, and sure enough, a gopher came up from underneath, chewed through the fabric, and helped themselves to, 
help themselves to all of the potatoes. So now I had to take all of my bags, the grow bags, and stick them on the driveway on the asphalt to protect them from the gophers. So I've got my hard containers up here. This is one of those South American potatoes I was telling you about. Oh look, it's forming flowers. I'm gonna pinch that off, save the energy. But those are gonna be cutting soon. Um, these are all Colombian and those weird South American varieties I was telling you about, the more wild varieties. And then this garlic just came from grocery store garlic. Break the pieces off, shove them down around the pots. I can come out, I can cut those garlic greens to stir fry. Then you get the benefits of not just the chemicals from the garlic, but the chlorophyll and the things you get with green vegetables, vitamin K, blah, 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 blah. I do that with my onions also. And the thing with garlic is, which is really interesting, now I'm going from potatoes to garlic, is if you want large garlic, garlic bulbs, you have to use a large piece of garlic. If you use your little tiny pieces of garlic that are towards the center of the garlic, you're going to have small garlic bulbs and plants, which is fine for this because I'm just using it as this like secondary uh, companion plant and medicine companion for the potatoes to help with potential potato disease. And I have noticed that these South American potatoes have been really vulnerable to, look at this, to slugs and earwigs. They love them. They love them, they love them, they love them. So I'm gonna get some slug bait out here today to help knock down the population so they have a chance to thrive a little bit. I'm not worried about it because it's so early spring that they really haven't started growing yet. So they kind of did me a favor by letting me know what they're up to. <laughs> okay, that's it. I think I've covered everything. Um, I hope that I can find my subscriber that asked for this video so I can send her a direct link that I have fulfilled my promise to them. And that's it. You have a great day. If you like my garden wisdom, money-saving tips, rants, raves, art, and occasional magic. Please subscribe. It helps. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other because I believe how we treat each other on the street is our ultimate reality. Bye for now.